Hello everyone, please let me introduce myself. I am John Arnedo, a lecturer and researcher in the Universidad Oberta de Catalunya, a fully online distance learning university. In this short video, I will present the paper titled Coding is Fun, Engaging Adult Online Learning Using Programming Games, accepted in the Gamilan track of the Team Conference 2022. This work was also co-authored by my colleague David Garcia. So let's begin. The starting point of this work is the so-called programming game genre. This could be considered a subtype of puzzle game, where you don't directly control your avatar, if any at all. As its name implies, challenges must be solved by providing instructions a priori, and then executing them, in order to see whether you solve the challenge or not. In this kind of games, there is no doubt that computational thinking and abstract problem solving play a fundamental role in solving the challenges presented by the game designer. The main interesting point which lead us to this study is the fact that its popularity has been greatly increased in the last years. This genre has transitioned from a low production value, mostly directed to children in the educational context, no? towards fully fledged high value entertainment products no? sold in the main digital storefronts, such as for instance Steam or Good Old Games. These kind of games are not created to entertain, not necessarily teach, and geared towards a more adult public, with a greater complexity. It is very well documented in the academic literature that learning to program is one of the hardest subjects for beginners in any computer science related curriculum. According to literature reviews on the topic, the top five difficulties for students are, in order of importance, engagement, problem solving, control structures, confidence, and the abstract nature of programming. Given this list with engagement and problem solving at the top, maybe it's worth taking a better look at existing commercial off-the-shelf programming games, even when their design principles are based on, above all, making the game fun and not actually being serious games or being educational games. Is the latest crop of programming games useful to learn actual coding in higher education? Therefore, we propose the following research questions in our work. What is the student's perception of them as educational resources? And then, did it have any impact in the student's sense of self-efficacy? The study was conducted at our institution, no? Universidad de Berta de Catalunya, a fully online university offering graduate and postgraduate programs in different languages. The typical students are fully autonomous adult learnings. About 64% of them are more than 30 years old, and 27% are even 40 years older. No? Most work full-time and are financially independent. Specifically, this study was performed in the different offerings of the Programming Fundamentals course, which is the first year in different degrees, such as the Computer Engineering, Telecommunications, Video Game Development and Data Science, when students have to learn to program from scratch. No? This is the main point, no? that this, is a stu this course is the first one where any students will learn to program from zero. No? After a thorough study, the chosen games for uh, this research work were Human Resource Machine and 7 Billion Humans, no? from the developer named Tomorrow Corporation. No? These specific games are based on code blobs that must be combined to produce a correct output, given a random input. Challenges slowly increase in difficulty, and despite its look and feel, which sometimes might look a bit childish, no? they quickly reach a quite high level of complexity, <laughs> actually. No? Levels are graded on correctness, but also on efficiency, for instance, in memory or number of, of instructions. No? They were chosen for technological reasons, such as their platform availability or their ease of installation or usability, as well as their educational alignment with the Programming Fundamentals curriculum. All of this was analyzed in a previous paper we published in the previous Gamilaran track no? last year. In this study, we wanted to distance ourselves no, from the classical approach to just measuring academic performance, since we don't think these are silver bullets, no, that okay, using video games will make every student get no, uh, uh, the highest grade, no, the highest mark. No? <laughs> so the, the grades we did not expect to skyrocket. No? The, the, the experiment was more about, about engagement, no? the experience, no? reducing the friction no? to, to study this complex uh, no, topics no, in programming fundamentals. Therefore, we aim for a much more fine-grained approach no, to actually learn the perceptions and feelings of the students and their progress during the study of the subject. 
For this, we chose a qualitative approach based on reflective journals that the students had to submit on a weekly basis for the first six weeks of the course, when they learned the very basics of coding. Nevertheless, we also use a questionnaire to assess the students' perception of self-efficacy. But very important too, no, the use of these games was not presented as mandatory. No? We just provided some guidelines on which levels they should play each week, no? following the topics of the curriculum, so they could be aligned, no? whether it was time to study variables or uh, iterative flow control, no? or maybe selection flow control. No? But the students were free to play as they saw fit or they considered the game useful to them. No? The details of the approach can be found and explained much better in the paper. The study of the reflective journals provided us some insights on the students' perception no, about this kind of games and how they contributed to the educational process. In the presentation, we just include some sample quotes to make the point uh, no, on each case. But of course, uh, there was lots of interesting information no, and diverse points of view in the reflective journal process. No? You can find more details also in the paper, no? but to be succinct, the more relevant aspects will be, will be described now. For instance, on one hand, uh, we, we found uh, lots of cases of stealth learning. No? So after the fact, uh, students realized that they, they already knew something. Why? Because they had been practicing in the game. No? So the, the topic became easier to study because they, they somehow realized they already knew this because they had been playing the game. No? So this quote no? that, that says, this week also makes me feel like I learned very little on the subject. But Unlike previous weeks, no, <laughs> this time I clearly see that it's because I already learned it through the games, no, even though I didn't realize. No? On the other hand, even the games were engaging and easy to learn, they tended to contribute sometimes to frustration. No? Not everything is positive. No? When the students get got stuck on a level. Therefore, as standalone tools, they could actually have a negative impact. One has to be careful. No? Maybe they should be accompanied by guides no? or open discussions among players, no? but not, not as a resource that is used stand as a standalone tool. Uh, no, resource that students alone no, uh, consume at home. No? Interestingly, in, re in regards to this fact no, about frustration, no, the, the main source detected was not actually being unable to, to pass a level, but going for the best score, no, optimizing the program until the student got the minimum number of instructions to solve the challenge. No? In fact, both the journals and the self-efficacy questionnaire provided a clear picture on how students' perception on their ability to improve still increased. No? And when they got frustrated, it's because they wanted to do the best, not just because they were unable to just do the minimum, no? which is quite interesting. No? Therefore, going back to the research questions, we found evidences that the students consider this game as useful educational resources that, by virtue of their constant feedback, help them become more confident on the topic and motivated them to improve the course. No? This study, of course, has some limitations inherent to the sample size, the specific games chosen, and the idiosyncrasies of adult learners. No? But nevertheless, it provided some interesting insights about the impact of commercial off-the-shelf programming games no? geared towards entertainment no? in adults who just want to start to learn to code. No? And well, that's it. Thanks you if you made it so far in this very short presentation. As I said, you can find much more details in the paper and I will be happy to discuss it during the team conference. See you there.